Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Worn Edges Part 3. Now, um, if you haven't seen Parts 1 and 2, I recommend checking those out first. Um, in Part 1, I show a technique for uh, baking curvature information into your mesh using um, a script that I wrote, uh, and then you can use this curvature information to do effects like um, chipped paint off the edges of a material. And then in part two, I showed another technique, um, very similar, except this one involves a plug-in from Boomer Labs that lets you um, achieve um, uh, curvature effects in a much uh, better way, uh, in the sense that you don't have to pre-bake stuff. It happens automatically at render time, which has a lot of major advantages. And since I posted those two videos, I've had a lot of people um, ask me some questions about some other techniques, specifically using V-Ray Dirt and using inverse normals to get a curvature type um, uh, map. And then the other one is using the new V-Ray Curvature Shader that I think got added in 3.2, uh, V-Ray 3.2, I believe. So um, I looked into both of these techniques, and uh, personally, I don't recommend using either of these techniques for a, a number of reasons. But if I'm going to make that recommendation, I should probably show you what those reasons are. So that's what I'm going to do in this video: is just quickly show you these two techniques and the disadvantages of uh, and advantages of using them. So the first one of the two I'm going to show you is the uh, V-Ray Dirt technique. Now, uh, the V-Ray Dirt map, um, you can see it inside here, inside of this material. This is the V-Ray Dirt map. This is actually an occlusion shader. And what occlusion shaders do is, uh, I have an example here on my website if you want to uh, check out this tutorial, uh, is it finds areas that are occluded, as in areas where the, the light and uh, weather doesn't reach, and then puts a, a map in there. So for example, if I go up here, you can see that this is the occluded area. And uh, in this example, I, I use this occluded area to create uh, rust, uh, where I put the rust down uh, in, in this area here. Now the difference between an occlusion shader and a curvature shader is that the occlusion shader will put stuff in these concave edges, but it won't put stuff in the convex edges, convex edges being uh, the ones that uh, are at uh, 90 degrees each other up at the top, like here, that's a convex edge, that's a convex edge. And that's what the um, occlusion shader is for, uh, so, sorry, that's what uh, the curvature shader is for. However, inside of the occlusion shader, there is something down here called invert normal. And if you turn that on, that does something very similar to uh, a curvature shader where you can get the, um, the, the convex edges. So let me just render this. There we go. So you can see that if you turn on the uh, invert normal, you get these edges here. Uh, which are the edges that you tend to want to put uh, paint chips and stuff on. Now, uh, the problem with this, though, is that this particular, uh, while it does get these edges, it's really kind of difficult to control, especially if you have a mesh that has very large objects and very small objects. So, like, if you look here, um, these are sort of larger surfaces. And let's say now you're like, okay, so I want to get, um, that's fine, I have these edges, but I really want this to be a much larger black edge. And so um, you can fiddle with these parameters. I fiddled with the radius and the distribution and, and fall off whatnot to get uh, the best results that I could. And then on top of that, I put this into an output map. And the output map has down here um, a method of clamping the colors so you can put more black or more white in here. So let's say you want more black uh, in there. The way to do that is to drag this up here and drag that up there so that there's much more black in your signal. And then if we re-render, that gives you much better black edges around here. But then if you look here in these smaller areas, uh, they're almost completely black. And you're like, okay, well, I don't want those to be completely black because that would mean that entire area is uh, having the paint chipped off. I only want, um, I want there to be more white. And so you go here and you're like, okay, well, let's put more white into here. And you can do that. And that creates much better results here uh, but then these areas here have almost nothing going on whatsoever. So the big problem with using this technique um, is that um, it's real tough to control if you want to get sort of a balanced um, uh, amount of curvature based on um, these different sizes of objects. Now one thing you could do, of course, is you could uh, make two different maps, and one map is for small things and one map is for large things, but that's a real pain to do because then you have to remember to assign the right material or, or the right map to different objects in your scene, and if you have hundreds of thousands of objects, that's going to take a lot of work to do. 
And so this is why I generally don't recommend using this, uh, this technique. Um, if you look here, here's an example of it. And then here is an example of the same mesh uh, there using uh, Boomer Labs plugin. And you can see using the Boomer Labs plugin, you got these nice big uh, black areas here, and then you have sort of um, more balanced black edges on, on this area. Whereas this using the inverse uh, normal technique inside of uh, dirt, it just adds too much black to these areas and not enough black to, to these areas. Now let's move on to the V-Ray curvature shader. So when this shader got added in V-Ray 3.2, I was really excited. And uh, when I started playing with it, I had a lot of trouble getting it to uh, get the results that I was expecting. And so in this example here, um, I've assigned, this is the uh, Boomer Labs um, curvature shader. And I'll hit render on this. And you can see here that you have a nice, uh, this edge is, is, is black with a decent width to it. And then you have a decent width on these uh, smaller areas here. And then if I um, select everything and assign the V-Ray curvature shader and hit render on that, you can see some of the same problems happening with this that were happening with the uh, V-Ray dirt shader. And so if you look here, you see, okay, well, this has kind of got too much black and this doesn't have enough black. And if I want to increase the, the amount, let's just do this. It's like, okay, so now the, this area here has got uh, far more black to it. That's more what I'm looking for. But then this thing is just absolutely covered in black. And so it's real tough to get that balance between the, the large objects and the, uh, the small objects, which the uh, Boomer Labs one tends to give. And then this is the other issue with the curvature shader, is that many curvature shaders, including the Boomer Lab one, can give you a different color for the concave and the, the convex surfaces. But you can see here that uh, this is the V-Ray uh, curvature shader, and I put um, it into a gradient. And so the flat areas are blue, uh, but then the concave and the convex uh, colors are actually the same color, this yellow here. And it would be really nice uh, to have this where the uh, convex and concave could be different colors, because then you might want to apply different kinds of wear to uh, different parts of the surface. And here's just that example again, uh, rendered out that I showed you. So the V-Ray curvature shader, and then the uh, Boomer Lab shader. Anyway, so that's the reason that I currently still recommend using either uh, my uh, curvature baking technique that I showed in the first video or using the Boomer Labs plugin that I showed in the second video. Now, uh, Vlado uh, from the Chaos Group has said that he's going to look into the curvature shader inside of V-Ray and see if it can be adjusted or if the technique uh, can be adjusted to get uh, better results. And so I'm really, really hoping that I can do uh, part four of this video um, in the near future, and that one will show off um, the new improvements to the V-Ray curvature shader, and then we can use the, the V-Ray shader. Uh, but until that happens, I still recommend that um, you should um, usually look at uh, the other two techniques. And, uh, you know, the, um, the, the curvature shader inside of V-Ray or the inverse normal technique can work in some circumstances, so feel free to use it if uh, you find a situation that it works. But for the kind of stuff that I'm doing, I just find I get much more consistent result using the first two techniques. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, please visit my website, neilblevins.com, for more tutorials. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to be notified the next time I have another video tutorial that goes up. Thank you.